Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off, passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Welcome back to the Active Turkey Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stomeister with Olson Group, and this is the Tom Olson. The Tom Olson, yes. You got that right this time, Jared. Good, good way to get it right this time. I'm just he, kidding. No. Got, I got the memo he sent out, and it's to get that right. So I did what I was told to do. Absolutely uh, not. Don't listen to Jared. Jared, no. Jared, he, he thinks he's a funny guy. So yeah. sometimes, you know, even around the office, sometimes we have to put up with his his humor. Um, it, it's tough. He calls it humor. You know, we went we went go karting uh, <laughs> a week a week or two ago, Jared. And maybe you should tell the audience, you know, who won that that go karting trip. It, it was it was fun wasn't it it was a blast uh and one thing i've learned is that it's not really in the best interest of an employee to be their boss oh I mean, right. they can make things really difficult for you. oh my goodness so he, so oh. he won and, oh. I, and, and i and i i praise you for that you did a great job i did not win the first round <laughs> Let, let's put one? it that jared won the first round i did and um, I was in third place, and I just couldn't believe it. And I was like, what in the world? I got beat by a girl. Um, and Patty, she's somebody to be reckoned with, who's she actually is. the construction manager yeah. of our company here. And uh, we had a blast. It was fun. <laughs> um, if you haven't ever been to Accelerate, is that what it was called? It was Accelerate. Accelerate. Yeah. And then they also have, um, you can throw axes there. Uh, it was it was pretty cool. So we, we did three races, and mm-hmm. I did win two of them. He and did. I was the fastest overall. And you won. Just so everybody knows, you know, that, you know, if you guys want to take me on for a mm-hmm. challenge anytime um, I'm ready to go so I do think most of you are wondering about yeah. about that specifically so <laughs> now, now I mean that's why we have truths, this podcast right about active yes. turnkey to talk yes. about go-karting well actually you just mentioned uh, Patty yes. who's our construction manager so uh, throughout this podcast we've mentioned several times about our companies we've actually had people reach out to us and say you know what are some of your companies that you guys have so before we get in the podcast and the topic today I thought maybe we should address yeah so I, awesome I, I, I great for bringing that up um, you know, we've be, we been getting asked, hey, like you keep talking about all these companies mm-hmm. and all these things in this active turnkey program that, mm-hmm. that you have. We have the active turnkey book here, the best way to buy rentals. You can pick this up at atkbook.com um, or even find it on Amazon. Just look at look for Tom Wilson as an author. Um, you can find that book or you can even find the book that's, that is that um, is I wrote about contractors, mm-hmm. um, investors versus contractors. But um but I th- a lot of people have been asking us questions about like what in the world does your makeup look like, and if I do business with your company, what would it what it, what would it look like? So mm-hmm. I thought today maybe we could just maybe explain that a little bit better. So Olson Group, I have three companies that service mm-hmm. these real estate investors. The one company is called Olson Group Network, and Jared is the asset leader of that company, and he's also the sales director for for that company. So um, Olson Group builds rental portfolios for investors. That's sure. who's putting this this podcast on is is is, is Olson Group. Um, second of all, my background and my roots are in construction, mm-hmm. and you know through the years I've had a large construction company. I've made it smaller. I've made it larger. I've made it smaller. <laughs> um, and but I I kind of feel like construction is one of those points that it brings so much value, but it's hard to make money in as an operator. Mm -hmm. It's almost kind of like property management. It's Mm -hmm. the same way. Mm -hmm. Um, So Olson Construction Management Services does um, or rehabs rental portfolios for investors. So Olson Group um, builds rental portfolios, Mm -hmm. the Olson Construction Management rehabs rental portfolios for investors. And then Olson Property Services is a property management company in which we right now currently manage hundreds of homes for mm-hmm. our investors already. And we're looking to build that business as well. Mm-hmm. So um, so just to kind of be to be clear and let everybody know out there, um, for us, if you worked with the Active Turnkey program, you would actually buy from Olson Group. Mm-hmm. You would get, the, the home would be rehabbed by Olson Construction Management Services mm-hmm. and then it would be managed by Olson Property Services. And there's kind of like this handoff, um, mm-hmm. you know, be a conduit, not a bucket. So Jared's a conduit to the construction, the construction's a conduit to the property manager, and then the property manager helps manage for you down the road. So just to help everybody understand that. And, th- and then for people that haven't heard of good success, mm-hmm. 
We also have the Good Success Podcast as well, but it's a mastermind for um, real estate entrepreneurs and business owners. It's not all real estate, um, some just just business owners. And, mm-hmm. and I really want to focus on purpose-driven individuals who want to not only make a bunch of money, because I think making money is important, but it, they don't want to do it so they can just have a bunch of money. They want to work to have to give. Mm-hmm. And that we meet four times a year, and we really try to help people find their purpose in life, fulfill their purpose in life, but also make a whole lot more net profit so they can um, do whatever it is that they believe that they were placed on this earth for in a much bigger way and have a much bigger impact. So that's what good success is all about. So hopefully that clarifies some of the questions that we've been getting and everybody kind of understands, you know, kind of who we are and and what we have to offer. So today's uh, podcast topic today is how to manage your property manager. So really interesting, and I love this topic. I really do. You know, we kind of almost talked about this last week a little bit, a little bit, when we talked about mm-hmm. um, you know the expectations of the actual owner, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm I'm interested to see where we're going to go with this today. Um, but but uh, so what do you got, Jared? I have a slew of things we can talk about, and uh, so just <laughs> buckle up, Tom. Uh, no, first of all, we we want to jump right in, and the expectations. So many times when I'm dealing with uh, dealing with an investor. So like he said, there's this funnel and I'm usually the one who gets that, that relationship first, working with the investor. So I, I'm helping them find deals for their portfolio and then it transitions into the construction company and then in the end, the, the property manager. So we're all working hand in hand together. And a lot of times what happens is, and I, I heard this just last week, is uh, from a disgruntled buyer uh, and a lot of it had to do with, with, uh, with the management piece. And, but kind of like the other direction. So the other the issue with this situation was um, that this particular um, buyer had never really had a discussion with the property manager. And we had tried to set it up over and over again, and they had never really given direction to the property manager. And we actually, Tom mentioned in the last podcast about the importance of just signing the property management agreement. Um, and we'll actually get in a little bit that a little bit later. But in this case, there was no direction from the manager. And so Tom, give us a little insight as, you know, what is the property manager? What do they do? I mean, that's... Well, I mean, we, we can get into what does a property manager do, mm-hmm. I think, in a different podcast. But today, I'd really want to... I think... What I hear from the owners, Mm -hmm. so I know a bunch of people around the country, and they own properties in my market, they own properties Mm -hmm. in Birmingham, they may own properties in Cleveland, they own properties in Detroit, they own properties in Dallas, they own properties in North South Carolina, Um, and you know, I kind of hear the same things over and over again about what's bad about the property manager Mm -hmm. or what they don't like about the property manager. And the biggest thing I hear is communication. Like as long as a property manager is willing to communicate with Mm -hmm. me, most reasonable property owners can can deal with any kind of situation that comes up. But mm-hmm. today's podcast is more about like how do you manage? Mm-hmm. And um, I'm, I've we've read this. We're, we're actually reading this. But I've I've already read it. But um, in my companies, um, I take all the employees that that work for me, and we do a city hall meeting twice a month. And then that in that city hall meeting, we we have culture building activities. And one of those things that we do is we do a book review. So mm-hmm. every single two weeks, we are reading one or two chapters of a book, and then we're reviewing it as a group. And I think if you're not doing that in your company, you should probably consider start doing it. There's a lot of different things that you don't realize that's happening when you're doing that. Number one, you find out who's compliant and who actually is going to listening <laughs> from a property own from an owner <laughs> standpoint. Um, you know, you, you see like who really wants to help and who wants to raise their hand and, 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 and offer, mm-hmm. um, you know, feedback on it. You, you also see like what they're seeing because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes within a book, like many different things will come out of a certain chapter. And some mm-hmm. people, when they stick to certain parts of it, you know, okay, well, there's, there's something I need to help that employee with because mm-hmm. they're having to burn their saddle when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that you can use as an owner to, to use that. But we're, I'm, we're reading a book right now and it's called, It's Okay to Be the Boss. Mm-hmm. And it really talks about the epidemic that is today of of actually under management. Mm-hmm. And it's um, I think there's I think a lot of times people get accused of or they think that everybody's out there to micromanage them. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the book 
doesn't say this, but it almost it almost goes all the way to the point where it says that there's really no such thing as micromanagement. Um, and 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 if that's and if it is an epidemic, that's not the epidemic. The real epidemic that's going on today is under management. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first thing that somebody has to realize when they own a rental property, Jared, though, is that they're still the owner. Correct. So I think you have to start with the mindset of you are the owner and you've now entrusted the property to somebody else. Mm-hmm. When you do so, because rental properties and because we live in the you know legal type company you know world that we live in now, there's so many things and so many decisions and so many little nuances that still have to be communicated from the owner. So mm-hmm. kind of like what you said, mm-hmm. um, if you don't ever sign your property management agreement, that is something that that's that's the first Correct. step to mm-hmm. be able to manage your property manager agreement. Uh, property manager is to read the property management agreement, understand what the sandbox says mm-hmm. or what the rules of the sandbox mm-hmm. are. Mm-hmm. Because basically the, the, the way that if I'm owning a property in Birmingham, for instance, and I read the property management agreement, I agree to the property management agreement, the future as long as that property management agreement is being held and as long as the expectations are being held that I was that I was thought was going to be set to me. Mm-hmm. Now, what I can't do is make assumptions because assumptions, you know what that does. It gets both of us in trouble here. Very much. Um, and it's normally Jared that gets in trouble, but we'll, we'll, that, that, that's a different podcast. Maybe we should have a podcast about all the times Jared gets in trouble. It would be lengthy. Well, I'll tell you that. <laughs> how much time do you guys have? <laughs> but anyways, um, but but I think in order to manage something, you have to know what the rules are, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So um, so I, I think that's kind of where it starts. It starts with the mindset. Um, and I don't believe that the mindset ought to be you work for me. I mm-hmm. believe that the mindset ought to be we are a team. Right. And hey, you are a, my steward and I'm going to treat you as well as I can, possibly can. I'm going to give you the trust that I can possibly give mm-hmm. you. But if some things aren't done in a timely manner, if mm-hmm. I'm not getting communicated with, I think that you absolutely have to as an owner. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm saying even do this with my own companies. If you right. are an owner and, and you own properties in my company, you should be asking the property manager, you know, you know, I was told this was going to be done by this time. Mm-hmm. And these are the two questions that I have I have used for management and I recommend to my mastermind. I recommend mm-hmm. all the time I, I tell people. There's two things. When things aren't being done, um, I think everybody thinks it's a hard conversation, and mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be. Mm-hmm. The two questions that I use every time, you might want to write this down because it's really important. Everybody got a pen and paper, right? Okay? Mm-hmm. So if you're driving, don't write it down. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the two questions are, number one, why isn't it done? You know, like, it's not very hard to ask that question. Mm-hmm. shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. So it, it's just, and it's not emotional. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be emotional because you're a manager. When, you, when you're in the manager's realm... All emotions should be off the table. It's just like, I'm managing this property and I'm just going to have a pleasant conversation with you, Jared. So Jared, why isn't this done yet? So that, that, that's the first question I ask. And then the second question that you ask is, what are we doing to take care of it? Or what are we doing to get it done? Mm-hmm. Um, and what you'll find is if you ask those two questions, they're they're alleviating. Like, you know, th- there might be this tension that has built up and you've just kind of like, all of a sudden the air comes out of the tension. You're like, okay. We can handle mm-hmm. this because mm-hmm. number one, there's the admittance of it's not done, mm-hmm. right? The truth is out there. Okay, mm-hmm. whatever was supposed to be done mm-hmm. wasn't done. Maybe maybe the the house has been um, marketed for 14 days, and for some reason it's still not rented. And that's for us like that's a benchmark. If a house doesn't rent for 14 days, like I want to know why. Sure. Even as an owner of a property management company, mm-hmm. if there's any house that's been marketed for 14 days and it's not rented, I want to know why. Um, and then the second thing is is what are we doing to take care of it? Mm -hmm. And that question should be asked over and over and over again. It should be asked every hour of every day, but like there ought to be a set time in which like things, if they're not done, ought to be, you know, those questions ought to be asked. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and so I I think that's that's the mindset. I think that's the first part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think also part of managing um, a, a, a rental property or being the owner of a rental property, I think reading your monthly reports, Mm-hmm. No, I'm serious. Like, mm-hmm. so, like that data is important. It's not, uh, um, you know, it's it's not just the fact that somebody did the data. Mm-hmm. You know, I think sometimes we get too wrapped up in sure. in like the property manager's job. The property manager's job is just give me this data every single month at this time and make sure I get I get paid. Right. Well, fine. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But like, you're the owner. You're mm-hmm. the one that has the biggest thing, the biggest amount of money to gain or lose mm-hmm. in this whole rodeo. So, mm-hmm. I think if you don't read that property management, I mean, that monthly report, mm-hmm. 
I don't believe that as an owner, I'm doing my job. Mm -hmm. um, we even had this conversation a little bit with some of our own properties where, mm -hmm. like we have properties in a bunch of different companies and there was some kind of crack that was in our own mm -hmm. company that for some reason, a portion of our properties, we weren't reviewing that data. And I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure. It was, it's my fault, obviously, because I'm the owner. But um, but so we, we had this discussion, okay, who's gonna do that? And we, we kind of made sure that that was, that was gonna happen every single month. Mm -hmm. But as the owner of a rental property, somebody, and, it sh and it's not just the property manager. The property manager's job is not to review that data. The property mm -hmm. ma manager's job is to just give you the data, is mm -hmm. to perform the best you know, on the property as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. But if you review the data and you have a question, I think you you need to. Mm -hmm. It's in your best interest to. And in order to properly manage your property manager, you have to ask what you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So ask those questions of, hey, what is this for? Why well, you know why do we have to do that? And and you know you're gonna find out that 99.9 .9 times out of 100, all the answers are completely mm -hmm. accurate and completely mm -hmm. um, reasonable. So. Um, I don't know where else you you were hoping to go with that year, but I think that's the first part sure. of it. Like that's kind of like the big picture mm -hmm. is understanding where you are as an investor, and then also like you have to hand over that authority. Mm -hmm. So authority and management has to be given as well. You cannot just assume that somebody else is going to take reins mm -hmm. that you would want them to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so like for instance, we have manager or we have people that that we manage for that have said, hey. I want you to do whatever you think we should do right. and just put it on the property management agreement. I don't really want communication with you. Mm -hmm. And and we are like, fine, totally, that's totally fine by us, but we've already had that communication. Right. And we've had that direction given and that right. vision has been given mm -hmm. and they just have given complete carte blanche trust. Mm -hmm. I'm not recommending that everybody does that right. because I don't think that that's the right move for everybody. Mm -hmm. I think it is probably the right move for a certain percentage of people right. that may just don't have any time at all mm -hmm. to be able to, to vote to this. Um, but if you're the type of person, which I think most people out there that are listening to this podcast are, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be some kind of management of the property manager. Mm -hmm. It is not, I don't ever want anybody to ever think that rentals are a completely passive right. income stream. It is not mm -hmm. a completely passive income stream. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is mostly passive, I believe, even for the property manager standpoint. Like how in the world could a property manager manage hundreds of rentals if it was, part of it wasn't passive, if part of it didn't happen automatically sure. and part of it wasn't systems that were leveraged and automation and, and technology that, that, was, that was used to be able to make that happen? Well, I think you're absolutely right. The direction piece is, is one of the biggest. So, you know, you, you had mentioned uh, the team concept, mm -hmm. and we mentioned that before in different podcasts, and how uh, on occasion we've heard people say, you know, uh, uh, investors say, hey, you're a property manager, you work for me. And let's just, let's just pretend. Let's pretend or let's say that that's true. Well, what do you want? If they work for you, what do you want? Either way, you're given direction. Either way, they need to know. They need to know, hey, this is what I want, this is what I expect, go do it. And if you're not getting that direction, then even if they work for you, then what do you want them to do? Yeah, the harder the harder of the stance that you make, mm -hmm. and the more that you want to know, the more afraid the property manager is going to be able, going to be to make any decision at all. Sure. So you mm -hmm. got to figure out what that balance is. Mm -hmm. So what's the balance between like how much you trust that person at the time mm -hmm. versus how much time you have to be able to devote to make decisions? Because if because you can make every decision if you want to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the other extreme. So the one yeah. extreme that we talked about is, sure. hey, like, you know, this 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 particular person doesn't want us to ever bug them. They just want us to do whatever they would do and mm -hmm. we, they just want a bill or they mm -hmm. just want the extra money sent to them every single month. Mm -hmm. They want the report nice and tidy. Great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So if that's, if that's how, I don't believe that that's how you should manage. I think you ought to at least yeah. still review reports every single month. I mm -hmm. still think you ought to, you know, check into making sure that what they're telling you is true to a certain degree. Um, you know, I, I still think that all those things you should probably do, but there's some people that have way too much money and they don't have any time at all to devote mm -hmm. to this. They just want this to be a hundred percent as right. much passive as they possibly can. And the more passive that you want it to be, mm -hmm. you have to understand the more you have to give up that trust right. and the more that you have, but the, the more you want to make decisions, the more you just have to, you're, you're going to have to communicate a lot, yeah. you know? So like if you've got 20 properties, you're probably going to have something that you're communicating on at all times. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got four properties, okay, maybe you might, you might go through a couple months where it's just automatic, but you're going to have communications and you're going to have things come up and you're going to have maintenance repairs and you're mm -hmm. going to have mm -hmm. um, turnover at, at some point. You're going to, you're, it's just going to be what, what it is. Um, something else I would recommend as a way to help manage 
is to find somebody that's been doing rentals for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And when I say many, many years, I don't mean like one or two or three. I mean somebody that has been doing, man, has been, has owned rental properties, not just one rental property, but has owned many rental properties for, you know, five, 10, 15, mm-hmm. 20 years. Mm-hmm. And maybe use somebody else as kind of a sounding board. Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, and and I get used quite often for my own properties, and you know people that I even that even I that our companies manage for. I also get used as a sounding board for other people. Find somebody that you trust to be like, hey, he's going to tell me the truth whether I like it or not. <laughs> because sometimes you know when we get our panties in a wad, like we don't have no right to get our panties right. in a wad. Right. And it was even funny. I was even talking to one of my investors who's actually leasing a place himself. Um, and um, him and his, he's actually getting married really soon here and they're, they're leasing a place and he's got plenty of, he's actually one of my investors. He, he loans me money and he has plenty of money to buy, but just because of their job situation, they might be moving around here that they can't buy right now. But this is the first time he's ever leased a property ever. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and he was asking me, he went through this laundry list of things that he wanted fixed by the property manager. And I was like, okay, well, this one, you probably should definitely make sure that they get fixed right away. Mm-hmm. This and this and this, yes, they're going to probably get fixed, but just so you know, it's not a priority. Absolutely. It's not going to be done today. Mm-hmm. It's not an emergency. There's not water leaking. There's not something. But safety. it's something that it's not a safety issue. <laughs> like so, it's going to be something that they're going to take care of. But it, like if you called him on, he was this was a Saturday, and and he had called him on Friday, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, did they get back to with you? I'm like, he's like, yes, but they haven't fixed it yet. And I'm like, well, you know, like I think you might just want to. You know, just hold on a little bit and just like let them take care of things because if and I asked him the question, if this was your house, would it have been taken care of yet? Right. Uh, no, like he he, he uh, totally under like then sure. it, it started you know things started clicking. So um, so and that's that's like from the other angle, you know, mm-hmm. like from a from a renter standpoint, you know, having somebody to bounce ideas off of, but but have somebody else to bounce off ideas from. I think it's a good sure. way to be able to. Um, you know, to, to help manage, you know, the, the, it, it's not just managing the property manager, it's kind of managing your own expectations mm-hmm. because sometimes we have expectations that are really high and sometimes we have expectations that are really low mm-hmm. and we need that little bit of collaboration to kind of figure out what, what is, you know, what should be. Well, one thing, as you're saying that, one thing to think about is sometimes we, because of the emotion, we fail to realize that the property manager didn't cause an issue. That had nothing to do with necessarily with property management at all. It's just it's just real estate. Things sure. happen. So it doesn't mean it wasn't managed correctly. It just means an issue happened and now we that's kind of where they come in. Honestly, that's why you have property. a property manager. Exactly. That's exactly. why you don't that's why like I mean I've heard people say I, I manage my properties from afar and I'm like, okay, I'll see how long that's gonna last. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really normally last very mm-hmm. long. Um, but um, yeah. Well, the other thing to think about too is within our companies we have our our what do you call them our um, uh, accountability charts. So and, and so Tom's the owner and I'm I'm responsible to Tom. And so there are times when on sometimes on a daily basis or weekly basis I'm going to Tom and asking him questions. Hey, how do you want this done? Uh, he needs to give me that direction. And as the owner of the property, it's no different. You, you have this whole nother avenue. You maybe have your own business or maybe you work in a company. But in this case, you're the owner of this company and you brought in a property manager and they work under you. In order for them to make decisions, they need some direction from the uh, from that owner. So I think it's Yeah, it's like, you know, visionary mm-hmm. has become this like sexy term oh, out sure. there. Everybody like, everybody <laughs> thinks that they're the visionary. visionary. <laughs> and, and I think sometimes they think they're visionary just because they have a dream. And just because you have a dream and just because you've actually bought this book. So just so you know, in this book is going to give you a financial freedom plan. Like it mm-hmm. basically like if you'll actually fill it out, it, you know, it'll kind of go through a quick, you know, before you even get started in rentals, mm-hmm. creating yourself a financial freedom plan. And, um, you know, that's something that we probably should give away at some mm-hmm. point to our uh, to our listeners here. I actually mm-hmm. have an, another worksheet that, that, that could go mm-hmm. along with this that could really help yeah. our listeners. Um, but... But but just because you have that financial freedom plan doesn't mean that now you've you've met, you've you've given anybody any vision. So mm-hmm. just because you have a vision mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you've actually portrayed that. And I'll be honest with you, mm-hmm. as a business owner, like it's one of the things that I always am kind of questioning mm-hmm. myself on. Hey, did I give direction to Jared? Did he did he was he just a knucklehead today, or you know did I g- not give direction and it's completely one hundred percent my fault? Um, well, so that, that it's the same into, way um, with rentals. Like if you're the owner, like. You have to give that vision. But that is EOS. If you're familiar with EOS, the visionary doesn't put generally put the plan together. 
the visionary cast the vision and then you have a whole nother you have your integrator if you want to call it that they're the plan maker they help the visionary put the plan into action i mean in many cases that's what you see you see the you see the integrator put it into work he's managing the team yes but the visionary has to be the way to help communicate absolutely and help make sure that 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 everybody understands what mm-hmm. those next steps are Absolutely. and how, how we're going to get from, so vision from here isn't a to plan. here. Right. Vision yeah. is not just <laughs> vision is not just the goal. Right. I think sometimes we think the goal is the vision and it's not it's it's all the way back. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. and it's something that I have to work on even as, you know, a owner of many different companies. You do a great job. And the seat that well, thank you, you Jerry. So I don't <laughs> I think sometimes I fail miserably. <laughs> But um, anyway, so so anyways, I think vision is the very first part of because uh, you have to understand like you own a little business. That's what it is. Like totally. you own a little business here mm-hmm. with you whether you own one or ten or twenty or fifty or a hundred. Mm-hmm. Like you own it, it. Every single house is almost like its own little business. Mm-hmm. That's really good. So transitioning, what, what we talked about knowing your agreement. You need to know it. It's it's like anything else we mentioned in a previous podcast about playing a game. You want to know the rules of the game so you can win. Uh, now from that. When you're talking about managing your property manager, you know the agreement, but why? Why know it? Well, because you're going to evaluate accuracy, you know, whether or not your man- property manager is performing based upon how well they do the property management agreement. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you base it off of that. So if you're going to manage your property manager, just look at it, just evaluate. Okay, uh, maybe assess every once in a while, every six months or so, look at your agreement and say, how are they doing in these areas? Are they reporting properly? Is there something that, that's not happening that should be? And that's the way, that is the governing a piece of whatever you want to call it, documents you're using for for the for your communication, um, and then from there, I would even say, do they provide services even above that? Check and see, you know, are they strictly there? And and sometimes, well, nope, 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 nope. That's not what the property uh, management agreement says. So we we're not doing that for you. Uh, you know, just from those pieces, evaluate performance based upon the agreement. I don't know what you think about that, Tom. Yeah, no, I mean, I <laughs> I, I don't really have much to add to that. I mean, that's that's kind of what. What, that was, that's part of what we already talked about a little mm-hmm. bit with just having the expectation, knowing the property management agreement. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I comply. I, I agree 100%. Mm-hmm. Well, lastly, what I think we can do, we've hit communication. And, and you can do a podcast and every single podcast you ever do, you can talk about communication every single mm-hmm. time. If you're doing any kind, and it's any kind of relationship, it's any relationship in life, it's all about communication. But lastly, what's most important, and it goes into communication, is tell them what you want. Tell them what you want. And we talked about that with kind of direction, um, but that's so important. What do you want? And sometimes that, that that manager can be a little confused, like you said, hesitant to act if they don't know. Um, and then from there, if you, and then it just kind of compiles uh, or compounds it when there's not that direction, not the communication, not that uh, uh, as far as telling what you want. Now they don't know what to do. <laughs> and we've had some situations re- recently where they, they didn't hear from an owner. So at that point, what are they to do? And then, and then at that point, then when communication finally happened, um, they were not, they were upset about the way it was handled. And so, uh, I mean, again, they're, they're your manager. They're there to do what you want them to do and they just need your help. They need your assistance. No, so communication, I think there's two different types of communication. There is reactive communication and then there's proactive type of communication. So I think what Jared's talking about is the reactive communication. Like mm-hmm. if you are emailed, you know, like it is your job as the manager or as the owner of that home mm-hmm. to like respond back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of easy and kind of plain and simple. Um, and we did talk about that at the la- on the last yeah. podcast. But I think the other thing to be a good manager, you also have to have proactive communication. So I would set aside, I'd set aside time every single month, like I mm-hmm. said, to review mm-hmm. all of your your homes. Mm-hmm. So you know, to, to just go through the list. And for some of those, you're going to take ten seconds and be like, oh, I got this much in rent. This is what the property management fee was. Mm-hmm. Maybe I had a water bill. Maybe I had a lawn, you know, care bill. Maybe what I had, whatever. Mm-hmm. Boom, done over. And then the next property, it's going to be like, oh, I didn't get rent this month. Why didn't I get rent? Right. Okay. So then the question has to come up. Mm-hmm. Why didn't I get rent? And what are we doing to fix it? Right. You know, right. so, um, and so that's, in my opinion, that ought to be set up proactively. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also even recommend maybe like a once a year type of review over the whole thing, review over the relationship with, with mm-hmm. the property manager. You know, mm-hmm. like the mm-hmm. most important piece of that, I think is the person, mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, EOS teaches that there's like six parts of a business. The first one is vision, which we talked about. Mm-hmm. The second one is data. Okay. Am I getting my monthly reports? And the third one is people. Um, mm-hmm. I think people is probably the most important out of all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, you know, P, do you have the right person in place? And I think mm-hmm. you ought to, you have to reevaluate that 
every single year. I don't think it's something you should be reevaluated every single month. Mm-hmm. I think that's a little bit of overkill, mm-hmm. but um, I, I would say like at least once a year, reevaluate. Hey, is this working? Um, is it? I would even reevaluate my my documents. Reevaluate the uh, property management agreement. Hey, does this still work? Or hey, maybe. Maybe I've worked with a property manager now for a year and I didn't know all this stuff going into it. Now I feel like every time I've had a communication with them, they've always acted in my best interest. So maybe now I'm going to loosen up the reins a little bit more and just say, hey, it, only if it's these issues do I want to hear right. from you or only everything else, just 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 take care of it for me. I trust you. Mm-hmm. Um, or vice versa. You might feel yourself, huh, I feel like maybe I gave him too much trust and I need mm-hmm. to pull the reins back. Mm-hmm. So at the end of that year, you have this communi- you have this conversation and you say, hey, you know, I think I've been letting being a little bit too loose on this. So, you know, instead of like anything over a five hundred or six hundred dollars, maybe anything over four hundred dollars mm-hmm. um, is something that that I want to make sure that that I know, you know, what's going on, why it's there, and kind of I want to actually be the one to actually approve that. Um, so that that I mean that's just an example. There's other ways to be able to go about this. I mean, there's a difference between rental and rent to own. Mm-hmm. There's a difference. There's all these things about dogs sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, like some owners. Do not want any dogs in their properties, and it's totally fine. A lot of our owners do because, like in our area, our property management company is one of the only property management companies that will allow dogs. Mm-hmm. And you know, sometimes you can get fifty, seventy-five dollars more per mm-hmm. month mm-hmm. per dog in, in in a home. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things where, yes, are they going to tear up the property a little bit more? Absolutely, but you're going to get a two hundred fifty dollar non refundable um, pet fee. Plus, you're going to get another you know, $800 a year. So mm-hmm. are they going to make $800 more worth of damage? Maybe, mm-hmm. um, but you've, you've gotten it and mm-hmm. you've gotten a, a good tenant that, that hasn't, doesn't have another opportunity. Right. Um, so, so like there's many different things that, that you may want to do over the years. I actually even think a way to manage your property manager is also to understand yourself Maybe find a local realtor. Maybe they're a local realtor. That's fine. But find another realtor in the in the area that can help help you understand what your property's worth. Hmm. I think this is a, a good way to manage the property. And that's not the property manager's job. The property mm-hmm. manager's job is not to know how much your property is worth. And a lot of them may be able to help you tell you, but they're they're focused. Their daily you know mm-hmm. you know job mm-hmm. duties and their what they wake up and do is not mm-hmm. comping houses. Right. It's managing the tenants. It's taking the phone calls. It's marketing. It's mm-hmm. and that's what you want them to do if if a realtor is going to be a realtor fine let them be a realtor Mm -hmm. but if a realtor is also like trying to be a property manager i think the two don't 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 necessarily mix Mm -hmm. one's really sales and Mm -hmm. one's really operations right so um so i i would i would get a a a local realtor that's in the area that can help tell you hey what's this house worth you might Mm -hmm. want to reevaluate every five six seven years Mm -hmm. and at some points in some different types of the market it probably makes sense to sell Mm -hmm. you know like we've got properties that we sold three or four years ago that are worth a hundred thousand dollars more than when we (laughs) sold them to them Mm -hmm. so like if that's you and your maybe your goals change or maybe you decide you need cash or maybe you have a really huge tax bill mm-hmm. or maybe you had some medical problems or what it doesn't matter what life throws mm-hmm. at you mm-hmm. or maybe you just say hey maybe it's time to refinance the property mm-hmm. um, you know so there there are many different options that you can exchange. you could do a 1031 exchange you can mm-hmm. sell and buy a new property you can mm-hmm. do there's lots of different things you can do but that all goes along with managing the property and managing the property manager mm-hmm. um, so these are just these are suggestions that I have have to set yourself up for success. Listen, I think rentals is a long-term play. And um, I think a lot of what gets people messed up is their mindset. So that's why most of the stuff I talk about is all about mindset. It's mm-hmm. all about you know high level um, stuff. That's why I talk about vision first, you know, data second, people third, you know, um, and even it, it, so. So what, what are some of the other ones about traction, Jared, that we talk about? Processes. Do does your property manager have processes? That's something that has to be managed all the time too. Mm-hmm. And communications, one of those processes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think at the very end, it's traction. Like, do you actually are you making money, or is it actually working for you at mm-hmm. the end of the day? Are you completing things that need to be completed? Um, so all these things are very important to happen in business and. Every single one of them have to be managed. Absolutely. Um, and just because you, again, just because you have a property manager in place doesn't necessarily mean that it's completely hands off and it's completely all on them. Mm-hmm. Yes, they're there to pick up the pieces. They're there to solve the issues, mm-hmm. but issues are going to happen. And that's why you want a property manager because mm-hmm. you don't want to have to be that person that's you know, getting phone calls at two o'clock in the morning. Hmm. Well, someone hearing that may be thinking, boy, I thought this was supposed to be passive. When you really think about it in context, you're talking about a conversation once a month 
um, based upon information. Well, if that. Yeah, like sometimes if, it's if not. things are going... Some months, it mm-hmm. might be once a week. Sure. But then some months, you might not have... You might go six months and not have right. any kind of com- communication. Mm-hmm. You just have to know that when the communication is asked for, mm-hmm. that you really have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would have communication of some kind regularly. I don't care how regularly that is. It shouldn't be every week. That's probably too much. But like, you know, at least that communication from the property manager to you is that mm-hmm. every single month is mm-hmm. they're sending you your, your, your reports. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something that I'll tell you is if you're not... So, so th- these are red flags for me. So red flags for me are if I did reach out to my property manager and I didn't get a phone call back for a week mm-hmm. and I didn't get any kind of communication back for a week, mm-hmm. like it'd be a red flag for me. Um, and I'm not, and am I saying that that would never happen? No. Am I saying that there might be circumstances in which somebody went out of town or somebody mm-hmm. was in the hospital or somebody had a family emergency? No, I'm not saying that that, that would never happen, but to me, it'd be a red flag. Yeah. If I didn't get my, if I did not get my report that month, like That'd be a red flag to sure. me. Um, now, what I do see is I see too many owners letting those things go for three, four, six, eight months. I mean, I had one that was 18 months. He hadn't had a, he hadn't had one piece of data or one piece of communication from his property manager. I'm sorry that mm-hmm. that property manager should be fired. That property mm-hmm. manager should be you should it should be like immediate. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, won't, I I think you ought to all he has ask the questions. Why isn't this here? And and sure. and and what are we doing to take care of it? But like. Those are red flags for me, and I think that you should know what those red flags are for you, and you know, just kind of, um, you know, kind of make that, you know, some type of, you know, little guidelines for yourself. Mm-hmm. And I think that I, I would look for a, those red, those red flags. It's almost the same thing as a tenant. Mm-hmm. If a tenant doesn't communicate with me, or if I don't get paid by the fifth, mm-hmm. like, and there's, and then I call them, and then I'm, there's no communication back. Uh oh. Yes. You know, that's like the number one red flag for a tenant. It's mm-hmm. the same thing for a property manager. It's really funny because it's the exact same thing, and I and I and I've seen it over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. So um, just you know, put those put, put put those rules, put those things back, maybe write them down, mm-hmm. whatever it is. But I hope that that helps everybody. I'm not sure what else you you've got, Jared. How no, well no, direction I, you want to go I think today? That but. Definitely brings us in, and it it just brings us right back to the team concept. So you're going to want to have a manager who who. Uh, doesn't work for you when you're saying like in the strict sense of you do what I say type thing. It's hey, they they want to work with you. They want to get you the reports. They want your they want your property to be productive. They even want to do what you say. You just yeah. have to you just have to tell them what you Absolutely. want. <laughs> They're okay with that. They are. They're okay with it. Now there are certain situations where maybe there's just a company policy where hey we don't do this or we don't do that. And if they can explain it to you and if it doesn't work for you, great. You know you can find a property manager that will help you with that. But so I mean I think it's good news when a property manager would tell you hey we. Don't do this because of this. That's great. They're communicating with you, and they're telling you that they, they work for a tenant as well. They provide options for them, and I just think it's having that open dialogue is just huge. And realizing that if you find that good manager, that they're working with you, they're a team, and uh, and uh, they're hoping to get you to your goals. And so, uh, very exciting. I mean, and if that. they're telling you no, think about the way that they're like. Mm-hmm. It, it goes the same way with mm-hmm. with with a tenant. Mm-hmm. You know, do you want a property manager who's mm-hmm. going to tell, who's going to be truthful and who's going to give you the honest opinion? Mm-hmm. Or do you just want to have a property manager that just, you know, rolls over and, and mm-hmm. just like, mm-hmm. you know, says what you want to hear? Sure. Um, you know, so me, I want a property manager, management company who's willing to tell me the truth, who's Absolutely. willing to tell me when, when they've had an experience and it didn't work out mm-hmm. and why it didn't work out. Now, I also want that property manager to listen to me mm-hmm. and maybe I've had that experience a different way or maybe I've had an experience in which maybe there's just a little tweak mm-hmm. in their process that they, if they change this little tweak, okay, everything might right. turn out a little sure. bit of different. Mm-hmm. So like there should be a, a, a willingness on both parties to be able to listen mm-hmm. and um, be humble enough to accept mm-hmm. other people's ideas. Mm-hmm. But I think going the attitude going into it and the, the word, even the words that we use and you know, the, 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 the way that we communicate with people, I think has a lot to do with that. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, do unto others as you would have done unto you. If you were the property manager, how would you want to get treated? Yeah. Um, and you know, if, would 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 you want to be trusted if somebody was trusting you with with a property? Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I think that if we just live by that golden rule, sometimes mm-hmm. uh, life gets a lot easier. And that's a good place to be. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you for uh, listening to the podcast today. Remember, we do build rental portfolios for investors. So if you are looking to do that, we offer that opportunity. And we have several different companies, as we talked about today, what I do the buy and sell. So you can reach me at uh, jared at biolstongroup.com or you, uh, or you can uh, go to the biolstongroup.com website. And, uh, and so, Tom, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jared. Active Turnkey. The best way to buy rentals. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.